next speaker. Our next speaker is Brett Amarine. Uh, he's with Startup Junkie Consulting, and he's going to talk about how to uh, how they pivoted online to serve their clients. Brett is the managing director at Startup Junkie Consulting, and in this role, he's a leader in developing, deploying, and managing entrepreneurial programs and initiatives across the country and now globally. He's also a managing member of Tonic Fund, a general partner of Cadron Capital Partners and co-founder of Community Venture Foundation, doing business as Startup Junkie Foundation. Prior to this, Brett served five years in Honolulu and LA as a United States Air Force officer specializing in program and project management. And then the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal named Brett as one of the region's Fast 15. Welcome, Brett. Thanks for having me. So, the topic of the presentation today is, is focused on both how Startup Junkie went digital to survive and thrive and, and also on how many of our venture and small business clients uh, went digital to survive and thrive. And then some trends that we're seeing in the venture community that we think will persist beyond um, the pandemic. Next slide. So in order to really understand um, how we went digital to, to survive and, and how um, we were able to serve our clients to do so and, and um, get a little bit better context, uh, it's important to understand who we are and, and I'll get into that and then we'll get into how we went digital and how our clients did as well. Next slide. So who we are, that really comes uh, from why we exist. We exist at Startup Junkie to enable and empower entrepreneurs and innovators. Entrepreneurs start and grow ventures that create jobs in our community and not just jobs, livelihoods. They diversify our community's economy so it's less reliant on a few big companies. They bring to market new product services and solutions that our community needs, whether it's that coffee you love, that local beer you love, or that diagnostic device from Now Diagnostics that's potentially gonna save your life or that PPP forgiveness software, that Tesla software locally developed to, to help your business um, continue to thrive. And they generate tax revenue and overall improve quality of life. And that's why entrepreneurship is so important. And that's why we at Startup Chunky support that. Next slide. So, Again, our role in economic development is focused on entrepreneurship. And so what do we actually do? Well, we work with a diverse group of entrepreneurs, small business owners and innovators that are idea staged to 25 million in revenue from all industry verticals. And we work with them through no cost, one-on-one -on -one consulting, events, workshops and programs and outreach efforts. Next slide. All right, so our pandemic response Startup Junkies pandemic response. We have a lot of people on the team that are um, former military, a lot of former entrepreneurs, innovators, some inventors. And the motto that we came up with and that we um, presented to our clients um, to, to help get them through was improvise, adapt, and overcome. You know, we're not just going to sit and let this happen to us. We're going to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that's exactly what we did. So. We increased the cadence of our virtual no cost consulting sessions with small business owners and startups. Prior to this, almost all of our consulting sessions were done in person in Bentonville or in Fayetteville. Um, because of the pandemic, we went virtual and we were able to significantly increase the cadence um, of the consulting sessions by doing so. And, and you name a tool, we were using it, Zoom, Teams, um, Skype, you, you name it. We were the first in the region to provide near daily guidance uh, relaying the latest federal and state aid updates for small businesses. We had translated a lot of the PPP guidance, the Paycheck Protection Program guidance into Spanish. And that got us on the first page of Google, which is really interesting and I think pretty helpful to a lot of businesses out there. We developed and launched a comprehensive digital library of small business innovation and entrepreneurial education content on our YouTube channel. And that was really helpful for local entrepreneurs. 
we created guides for restaurants, bars, uh, retail, and other traditional businesses to become digitally enabled. And this was very important because these businesses, for the most part, um, were heavily impacted. And then we in increased utilization internally of all kinds of digital tools from Slack to Airtable to Calendly. You name a tool, um, we're using it. We've got to utilize all, quite a few because we have so many different venture clients and, and they have um, a different stack of tools they use. Next slide. So, you know, transitioning our consulting to virtual wasn't very hard. It was pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. When you have as many events as us, transitioning all those events virtually at the beginning of the pandemic was pretty daunting. People just weren't doing virtual events like we're doing here today on a, on a Saturday morning. Um, now it's pretty amazing and, and obvious how effective virtual events are, but at the start of the pandemic, it wasn't at all. Um, so we rapidly transition all of our events virtual. And in doing so, we were able to, again, increase the cadence and quality, I think, of those events. We had over 100 virtual events during the pandemic. And we tried to keep those events very relevant, things like leading your quarantine, um, things like how to weather the storm, mental wellness for small businesses, accelerating through a slowdown, et cetera. And then we increased the cadence, quality, and reach of the Startup Junkies podcast. Uh, we had Steve Case on our podcast during the pandemic. He's the AOL founder, part of Rise of the Rest and Sam Parr from The Hustle. Um, and this helped bring greater visibility to the Northwest Arkansas region and in Arkansas overall and helped provide local entrepreneurs timely information, education and inspiration. Next slide. Now, this is the more uh, exciting part, interesting part of the presentation, I think. This is how clients um, in the, the small business community went digital to survive and in some cases thrive. And many of the things I'm going to talk about here may seem obvious at this point, but at the beginning of the pandemic, um, some of this stuff was absolutely not obvious and not necessary. So um, on this slide, you're going to see Tula. Tula, Tula, amazing Mexican restaurant on the Fayetteville Square. They utilize um, contactless digital ordering um, using QR codes, pretty amazing. Um, and then with other companies in, in Fayetteville, companies like Kana, amazing Indian, bit, Indian restaurant, you can not only um, pull up the menu uh, on your phone, you can also order uh, and, and essentially you don't need to have contact with anyone. If you go to Kana, you park, go to your table, sit down, scan the QR code, order, uh, pay, food's brought out to you. You don't need to say anything to anyone if you don't want to. Um, and this has been very helpful in how um, local restaurants have been able to uh, comply and, and also keep their patrons safe. Next slide. So there have been a lot of digital tools that have been around for a while. Open Table is an example, but we've seen massive increased utilize, utilization in, in tools like OpenTable. And uh, here's an example of Cheers at the old post office using OpenTable. Um, many businesses, again, especially in the hospitality space, are using tools like OpenTable, um, whereas prior to the pandemic, they weren't. And this is something that will continue uh, well beyond. Next slide. Increased utilization of restaurant delivery apps like Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Waiter. I imagine many of you on this uh, in this event today probably never used these tools before this pandemic or, or very much. Um, and because of the pandemic, you've definitely used them and you'll probably continue to use them. And here's an amazing example locally of Conquesos. You can see their Google business listing here. They've done a really good job with their Google business listing being as accessible as possible. You can call them, message them, um, get directions, uh, order pickup, order delivery. It's all there on their Google business listing. Um, pretty incredible. This is a great example of how a business has went digital to make themselves as accessible as possible to customers. So well done in cases. Next slide. 
increased use and improvement of online ordering uh, for store pickup directly integrated into the restaurant's website. Here is an amazing local example of Snack Lab. They've got a location in Bentonville and in Fayetteville. They, their website is done in Weebly, which is owned by Square. Really well done. Um, directly on the website, you can order bowls and smoothies uh, for delivery and for pickup. Before uh, the pandemic, the site wasn't, uh, the UX and UI wasn't nearly as good, but uh, they had to do this. And this is something that's going to make them better beyond the pandemic. And below, you can see their Google business listing. And again, really well done. They show that they're available for dine-in, curbside pickup, no contact delivery, utilizing digital tools to make themselves as accessible to their customers and, and as safe to, for their customers as possible. Next slide. So uh, increased use of appointment and scheduling software. This is Old Wolf Barbershop here locally in Fayetteville. Many of you know Square as a great point of sale system. Square also has an incredible scheduling um, tool integrated within it. And so with a place like Old Wolf Barbershop, you can schedule your haircut, you know, your beard trim, whatever you need without calling them, without walking in there. Um, it's all done digitally through Square appointments. Um, in increased use here, I'm, I mentioned of Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo and Cash App. I would bet many of you didn't use Venmo before this, um, and many of you have since used Venmo, and, and probably your, your nieces, nephews, or kids have tried to Venmo you money or asked you to Venmo them money, and this is something that is not going away. Venmo is owned by PayPal and Cash App is owned by Square, and that's kind of uh, Square's answer to Venmo. Next slide. This is, uh, I think this is a pretty exciting slide. So accelerated use of grocery delivery apps, especially locally founded and headquartered easy bins. Um, this is a company that you would expect to start in Silicon Valley or Austin, not Northwest Arkansas, uh, but they did. And before the pandemic, they were really only in Northwest Arkansas. Now I think they're in six MSAs. The pandemic was an accelerant for them. With easy bins in one online purchase, you can buy goods from Walmart, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Target, Harps, Wright's Barbecue, et cetera, all delivered to you the next morning. A lot of people say, well, what's the difference between easy bins and you know, Walmart's delivery app? Well, that's the difference. With easy bins, you in one order can get food from Whole Foods, Targets, Harps, and Walmart in places like Wright's Barbecue. Again, amazing local business that's thriving during the pandemic um, and has been a lifesaver for many people. Um, good market timing here. Um, well done by James Farmer, the CEO over there. Next slide. Another example of a company that's not just thriving or not just surviving, but thriving. This is a local company called Gingerbread. She created online art education webinars instead of selling art products. And that created more revenue in one month than all of the revenue she had in the previous year. This is the power of digital and this is the power of the, the digital economy that we're in. And this is a great example of a local business that decided to improvise, adapt and overcome. And, and now she's thriving. Next slide. This is uh, really cool because uh, some of the laws around alcohol delivery were relaxed during the pandemic. There was certain innovation that happened that probably wouldn't have happened otherwise. Bike Rack Brewing, they had a software application built internally to support home delivery of craft beer. Um, that's just really cool. And, and you know, there was all kinds of innovations like this happening across Arkansas. And this is just one neat example. Next slide. This is another exciting uh, company based in Arkansas uh, that you know you may not think about being based in Arkansas. Tesla Software, they provide full service banking management software to community banks primarily across the country. They're based right here in Northwest Arkansas. They partnered with Mark Cuban to create PPP loan application and now PPP forgiveness software. They absolutely did not have to do this, but you know again, 
improvise, adapt, and overcome really resonated with them. And, and so they went out of their way to create this software and it's been massively helpful for their clients, um, their bank clients. And it's also been a way that they've onboarded new bank clients too. So check out Tesla software if you get a chance. Next slide. So this is activity that we think is going to last beyond the pandemic. And this is um, things that we're seeing in the venture community. And across the board increase in digital marketing, Google ads, Facebook ads, branching out things like remarketing and retargeting. So not just having an ad on Facebook, but going to the company's website and then you're scrolling through Facebook and you see that company's ad just kind of following you around everywhere you go. Well, that's remarketing and retargeting. There's going to be an increased use of that. There's going to be an increased use of overlooked ad platforms in the past, like YouTube and podcasts. And that's both your company creating YouTube and utilizing YouTube channels um, and podcasting, but also um, to use those platforms to advertise on. Um, there's going to be an increased utilization of that and also increased use of influencer marketing. So expect acceleration there. And, and if your company is not already accelerating there, it's going to have to if it wants to remain competitive. An increased use of tools like Slack, DocuSign, Teams, name a digital tool, it's going to continue to see accelerating growth even beyond the pandemic. And then, you know, these last three are pretty interesting. Um, you're going to see an increase in hiring of remote workers, especially overseas. Even local businesses have realized that work can be done anywhere. So now why not potentially seek out lower cost talent? We have an advantage in Arkansas relative to the rest of the US. But internationally, this will be a real challenge in the future. Jobs that cannot be automated, but can be done digitally will be at risk of migrating to low cost regions of the world. Again, though, in Arkansas, we have an amazing advantage because it is so cheap to live here and the quality of life is amazing. I think Arkansas has the potential, potential ability to be a work from anywhere kind of haven. And so I think you're gonna see a continuation of not just work from home, but work from anywhere and, it, and an expectation that work from anywhere in a flexible work environment will continue beyond the pandemic. And you may say, well, that's not us, that's not our company. Well. The best talent is going to demand that. The best younger talent is going to demand that. So if you want to have the best talent, the best younger talent, you're going to have to start offering more work from anywhere type of opportunities, more remote work opportunities. And then finally, a growth in work from anywhere businesses. We've seen a number of businesses um, get started and accelerate growth and get VC funding that have no office at all, that are completely remote and have team members all around the country. And some of these people have never met each other in person. Um, that's just the digital economy we live in. And we're gonna, we're gonna see more of that. That concludes my presentation, folks. Are there any questions? Questions? Good job. All right, I got one. Uh, yeah, you, did uh, you talked about Square? Have have you seen any implementation of what Square recently introduced in payment from QR code? What they've recently introduced in payment from QR code? Right. So the the payment being able to accept payments with QR code. There have been several apps that do that, and I think Tula already. It, um, utilizes Square to accept their um, payments, no contact payments. So you can, I think Square already does the, you scan the QR code, the menu pops up and you can order, et cetera. And, and I think that will accelerate. Um, Square is an innovative company. Square also, I think you may have read, just bought a whole bunch of Bitcoin, um, I guess as a hedge uh, for inflation, so. Hey, Brad, this is Jerry Adams. Uh, have you seen any influence in the curricular offerings um, either by the university or Fayetteville or even from the Brewer Center that tries to stay up with this phenomenon? You know, I think because, um, you know, yes, the global campus has had the IT readiness program, and I think you're going to see more emphasis placed on that IT readiness program. 
I think there's an opportunity for it to be better funded and, um, you know, improve the marketing and branding of it. I think you're going to see the Arkansas, Code, Arkansas Coding Academy that's run through C UCA continue to see more funding um, and more emphasis. And, and I think, um, you know, just in general, better training on all the digital tools that are out there is going to become a necessity. Um, but we're not seeing anything just yet you know we're yep. still in october um so we'll give it a little bit of time okay good thanks